A few months ago, Spinnaker contacted me and asked if I'd like to take a look at their new watch that was being released, which was actually the second version of the Bradner. And for whatever reason, mine didn't get shipped till about a month later. And while I was waiting, they actually emailed and asked if I'd like to take a look at another watch, which was to be released this month, which is the Hall California edition. And they actually got shipped about the same time. So here I am with both. Since the whole California is the newer watch and it's actually on pre-order until the 31st, I decided it'd be best to start with it and review it first. I'll get to the Bradner eventually, but there are already a number of good reviews out there for it. The original hull was released about a year ago, and it automatically drew comparisons to the Panerai Radio Mir with its very square cushion case and sandwich dial. So a year later, they've decided to double down on that and release a California dial edition. And it's that dial that most interested me with this watch. Now, California dials are a mix of Roman and Arabic numerals, and they've actually been around since the 30s, although they weren't called California dials until much later. And the exact reason for that is debatable. Yet they're most commonly associated with Rolex and Panerai during the late 70s and 80s in California. At this price, there isn't a whole lot of other watches with a California dial, so I think Spinnaker is actually rather smart to release this even if it does turn it into an homage. Unfortunately, the California edition doesn't keep the sandwich dial of the original hull, but it does use a very cool textured dial that Spinnaker has used in other watches. But before we get too far, I do want to announce the winner of their Milla strap giveaway, and that's Larry Liba. At this point, I should have contacted you already, and you can get back to me and we'll work it out. And if you haven't already entered my other giveaway, which is part of the Miyota 8218 video, I suggest you go check that out. Otherwise, let's take a closer look at the Hull California and start with the specs. The shape of the Hull California is defined by a rather square cushion case made with 316 stainless. Width is listed at 42 millimeters, but I found it just shy of that without the crown. And width, it was close to 45. Lug to lug is just under 50 millimeters, and it has a lug width of 22. So most of that is really standard for a diver. But the thing is, this really isn't a diver. Well, it sort of isn't. While Spinnaker specializes in dive-style watches, and the origins of the original Radio Mirror was a watch to be used by divers, by today's standards, this wouldn't qualify with only 100 meters of water resistance. The lack of a rotating bezel would also make it stand apart from most modern divers. So while the design is a classic, it puts it in a unique place by today's standards somewhere in between a diver and something casual, which is perfectly fine and honestly refreshing to see something different. Not to mention that 100 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown is really perfect for most people. What isn't however is the height and I really want to stress this point as I've already seen some confusion over it. Now the spec sheet lists the case thickness at 12 millimeters and I've already seen a few other reviews that just repeat this. I'm not sure if it's a mistake or if the spec sheet is actually listing the case height itself, but the total height, including the case spec and the crystal, is more like 15 and a half millimeters, so quite a bit of a difference. Although on the way to the top of that crystal, you have a lot of small gradual steps with the overall case shape and that bezel. So I don't think it looks overly tall or overly chunky, at least as cushion cases go. Generally, I'm okay with a tall watch as long as there's a good reason for it, like an increased water resistance or the design really demands it. And here, I'm not really sure. The domed crystal and tall bezel look nice and they are kind of necessary for the design, yet I can't help but feel that they could have reduced the height somewhere in here. Now, even though it is a bit tall, it still wears rather nicely, even on a NATO. Partly due to its low lugs, and partly because it's rather lightweight compared to most divers. It just feels nice and secure. Although even then, at this height, I'd still prefer it on a single pass. I also want to mention the price. It's currently listed at $250 for this model, and $275 for some others. As usual for Spinnaker, there are always discount codes floating around, including the one for my channel, which gives you 20% off which brings the price down to 200 and 220. The design here is iconic, defined by its square cushion case and very tall bezel topped with a nice domed crystal, and you really can't go wrong with that. Looking at it from the side, I think it does look a little chunky, but it's really hard to have a cushion case and not look a little chunky. 
and I really do like the shape and angles of those stubby lugs. Other than the brushed finishing on the bezel and top of the lugs, everything else here has a very smooth mirror-like polish. The crown may be a little small, but without any crown guards it's not very hard to get a hold of it and manipulate. The only aspect of the case I really don't like is the case back, which is a screw down exhibition case back, but with a rather large printed Spinnaker logo on the crystal, which blocks most of the movement. At this point, why even bother having it? Just go with the closed case back, or go the extra mile and get one with a very nice embossed engraving on it. The crystal has a very nice domed shape to it. It's a single dome with AR coating, and it's very clear and easy to see through it. The only downside is that it's a sapphire coated mineral crystal, which always confuses me a little bit when manufacturers use it. It's sort of a hybrid. It should have better scratch resistant than regular mineral, and be more impact resistant than regular sapphire. But personally I'm more concerned about scratches than anything else, so I would have preferred just straight sapphire. It is listed as having some AR coating on it, but even with that, it's still a bit reflective. That domed shape just seems to catch all the light around it. As you can tell, this is the blue version, and it has Spinnaker's very textured dial. On the black version, I think it looks more like stone or granite. Yet here, it almost reminds me more of staring at the moon and seeing all the craters on it. The intensity of that blue color does change, depending on the amount of light and the angle you're looking at it. If you've ever seen a California dial before, there shouldn't be any surprises here. It's a mix of Roman numerals on top and Arabic on the bottom, and often includes a train track chapter ring, which here it's very nicely done in white. It's really a classic design, with those Roman and Arabic numerals intermingling. It's sort of like a peanut butter jelly sandwich. For some, the combination is a perfect blend of flavors, but for others, it's an abomination and the two should never meet. This is really the first time I've ever spent a good amount of time with a California dial, and I had no problems or confusion with the two different types of numerals, and I have to say that it's actually grown on me quite a bit, and I especially love how it looks with the loom, but more on that later. The applied indices are rather thick and stand tall, which when combined with that textured dial really give this watch a cool sense of depth and texture, and I just love the yellow color on those indicators, giving it just a little bit of an aged loom look. I also appreciate the minimalist text on the dial, as it keeps your attention focused on the raised numerals. The Spinnaker logo at the top is in cursive. It's small and distinct with a silver color, whereas the water resistance on the bottom is very small, but in orange. It's just enough color to add some pop, but not too distracting, which led me to try and match the California with an orange strap. And I'm not really sure on this one. That strap might overpower the dial. A date is at the three. It's white text on a black background, so it really blends in more with the design. It does have a good frame around it, but the frame is in white, which matches the chapter ring. It looks good, but sitting next to a yellow indice, I think it just looks a little off. The hour and minute hands are pencil shaped with a lollipop second hand. I think it works well with the design, keeps it nice, simple, clean, and easy to read. The hand length is a little shorter than I would have liked, especially the second hand. It comes close to touching the chapter ring, but not quite. Now back to that loom, and I'd say the loom is good. The best way to test loom is really by comparison, so I put it up against a Seiko Turtle and a Vostok as reference. Initially everything is bright, and I just really love the look of the California dial as it glows. After 40 minutes, it has dimmed a bit, but it's still very visible. It's not as bright as the Seiko, but it's clearly better than the Vostok. So I'd say the loom is good. It's not Seiko great, but good. As for the Bradner, well, I'll save that for its own review. Movement-wise, we have the Workhorse Seiko NH35A, which you can clearly see underneath that exhibition case back. Or at least you would if it wasn't for that logo. Anyway, it's a workhorse movement with 40-hour power reserve, hacking, and hand-winding. It's probably the best choice for a watch at this price. Accuracy-wise on this one has actually been pretty good, gaining only about 3 seconds a day. Usually my luck with Seiko movements is much worse. I think that Bradner is sitting closer to 15. The California comes with this black, classic looking leather strap, 
which has been treated to be water resistant. The quality seems pretty good, and it is a rather thick strap, close to 4.5 millimeters thick, and it has a nice, rather beefy signed buckle to go along with that. The strap is thick, but not overly stiff, so it actually wears quite well. Cushion cases are known for being extremely comfortable, despite being a little on the chunky side. And the California here is no exception. Wearing it on the wrist is nice and comfortable, and the watch isn't too heavy. And visually, its stock strap I think looks really good with it, especially with the retro undertones of the California dial. The Hull California is a good option for someone that wants something classic, maybe a little refined, yet still casual, but with a good wrist presence. Now, Spinnaker recently started selling their own line of straps, and they sent along two with the California. The first is this blue seatbelt NATO with red trim. Initially, I was a little skeptical of the color combination, but I think it actually looks quite good with the California. And I think it's one of the better seatbelt NATOs I've run across. The other one they sent is this very nice navy blue leather rubber hybrid. It's a nice leather on top with rubber on the bottom. I think it's a good combo to use in the summer for when you want the watch to look nice, but still be rather comfortable in the heat. Both straps are really good, and I really love the curved angular buckle they come with. Price-wise, however, they are a little high, but I'd keep an eye out for promotions where they would include an extra strap if you buy a watch. They did this last month with the Bradner in pre-release, and at that point, it's really worth it. After spending a week with the watch, I've come to appreciate the California dial. It's a rather simple change, and kind of an odd one when you think about it. Yet it works, and it gives it a unique twist that's different than the other watches in my collection. As someone who was born and raised in California, I can say that I'm okay with having the dial named after the state. Although it's not the greatest thing named after California. That of course is the California Burrito, which is almost impossible to find outside Southern California. Overall, I think the Hull California is a good watch. It's a classic design with good wrist presence at an affordable price. Reliable movement, good loom, and a great looking dial. It's really kind of hard to go wrong here. There are some flaws here, but when you happen to catch the dial at the right angle with the right amount of light, and you really see the depth and texture, you can forgive many of those flaws. The one flaw that still remains is of course the height. The watch is still very manageable, but I do question on if 15 and millimeters is necessary. Now the list price of 250 I think is a little high, but the discounted price of 200 I think is very reasonable. Anyway, let me know what you think about the Hull California, or California dials in general, and if you have any questions about the Bradner that haven't already been answered, let me know. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.